Good morning. It's time for Coach's Corner, live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. I'm Tim Torrance. Thanks for tuning us in. We do it every Saturday morning from the McDonald's across from the Madison High School. This morning, we're going to have a doubleheader. We'll talk with Madison football coach Patrick Morrison and also Madison girls cross-country coach Josh Wilbur. Good morning to you. We're already ready to go for the season, aren't we? Yes, good morning. Always a pleasure to have uh, to be over. And yeah, we uh, had our scrimmage last night, so you know now we're into we're into week number one and preparing for our first opponent. So it's we're in the thick of it. I don't know where the time goes. We talk about this all the time. The time just flies by, and you're you're ending one season, and all of a sudden you're beginning the next season, and and it, it time goes by too quickly for you guys and for a lot of teams and most teams it's it's a year-round process to try to get the kids ready to play and get bigger and stronger and faster and all that kind of stuff one in nine season last year won your opener uh then couldn't crack the win column again kind of talk about last season and the progression and and it was a a injured quarterback carousel for a while for you guys yeah, it was definitely a learning experience for myself or even the players. Um, you know, we had to have some guys that had to step up and play some different positions, um, and some guys that got some opportunities um, to play some different positions. And um, obviously, we were installing a new offense last year, so it was new to everybody. Um, but you know, going into this season, you know, we're you know, I jokingly say that we're six, seven quarterbacks deep this year. <laughs> um, thankful for some of the guys that had to step up last year, but also just you know, having a couple guys come over that be incoming freshmen. And other guys that maybe we identify that you know have that athletic athletic ability or that arm technique that we could use at the quarterback position. So, you um, when you have a situation like you did last year with the the, the injured quarterbacks, and you got to throw somebody into the fire, and then somebody else, and then somebody else, and you don't want to put anybody in a position where they're not quite ready sometimes your hand is cold and you don't have a choice yeah you know very true and you know i think that's kind of where we found ourselves and you know towards the end of the season we had guys practicing the quarterback position that never thought they may play quarterback mm -hmm. um, but you look at last night's scrimmage and we take that from you know last year's learning experience we had five different kids play quarterback last night in the scrimmage so um you know we're just preparing ourselves also you know, building a foundation for our future, but also um, just trying to make sure that we have guys who are, you know, have had reps and have been in situations, um, so that way we don't find ourselves in a situation like we did last season. Do you, when you get to the end of the season and, and you kind of reflect back on last year, what do, what do you, what are your your thoughts as moving forward with the program? You know, definitely continue to build. Um, you know, our. Uh, our theme this year is be the positive difference. Um, so, you know, talking to the kids at the end of the season, you know, kids said there was a lot of positives, but, you know, you know, we've been around Madison football a lot that it's easy, it's easy for negatives to sneak up sometimes or even happen in a game. Um, so, you know, that's kind of our push all season long, and we're, you know, we're still continuing to try to change some mindsets and things like that um, on being positive and, you know, looking at everything as an opportunity um, no matter, you know, what the situation is. You know, every time you have an opportunity to either attack it positively Positively or attack it negatively. So, um, what do you what do you then do you do you focus on? Do you have a focus in the off season then from last year? We uh, you know we obviously wanted to get stronger, right. um, bigger, stronger. You know this team strength wise. You know if you look at it on paper, one of my stronger teams that I've had since sure. I've been here. Um, you know in the weight room. So there's probably only one other team that was a little bit stronger than them, and they had a very successful season. So I think this weight room does definitely matter. Um, the other thing is just trying to develop leaders. Mm -hmm. We uh, I went to a conference over the winter and listened to a guy speak, and he wrote a book called The Leadership Playbook. It's actually written for athletes. Um, I actually purchased, you know, one of those books. We purchased one of those books for each of the uh, kids on the football team and, you know, have given that book out for them to read. And, you know, we haven't – I've been pulling quotes out of it and talking, um, you know, the last, you know, week and a half. But uh, we'll actually have, you know, I'll point out spots in that. So, you know, we're we're trying to build the whole, whole character from leadership to strength to, you know, so that way we do have, you know, football players that can get the job done on the field and off the field. Do you, do you, um, do you look at – back at your your um, year last year and think okay if we get stronger or we do this or we do this you know maybe it will be a positive difference coming up in the future um, but y you can believe that and the coaches can believe that but until the kids believe it that's that's where the transition's got to come into effect yeah and sometimes you know you put kids in different situations and kids don't understand why you put them in those situations right um, kind of like you know last night's scrimmage for example you know the kids were like why are we rotating so much well the IHSA states that you have to you can only play a certain amount of plays but you know the other thing is is I want to see what kind of depth we have I wanted to see you know 
you know, where, where our weaknesses are were. And I wanted to put guys in different positions to see how they react to it. So, um, you know, sometimes kids don't understand that. Um, you know, from the initial point, then when you explain it to them afterwards, and they're like, oh. Yeah. So, you know, may not help us necessarily this week, but maybe, you know, a few weeks down the road if, you know, situations arise where, you know, a guy has to go in and play a different position or, you know, we need to make some changes and things like that. You know, they're going to be realize that they've already been put into a situation like that. You, you, you go. I want to go back to the weight room for just a second, it, and that's a it's, it's hard work in the weight room. It, it's a lot of dedication in the weight room to get to the point where you need to be. Are kids starting to understand how much the weight room pays off? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, we went up to a scrimmage over the summer uh, with Greenwood, Shelbyville, and Triton Central, um, and I had a parent who kind of came up to me and said, you know, for the, you know, he's been watching us for at least three years. His son's been on the team. And he came mm-hmm. up and said, you know, you guys looked equivalent to those guys out on the field, you know, size-wise mm-hmm. and things like that. So I think, you know, that's that's obviously a great compliment um, to get. But I think, you know, the kids, kids realize that, you know, Strength is what kind of moves things and keeps you healthy. Um, right. That's a big thing too. You know, some of the injuries we had last year, um, you know, were guys that maybe didn't commit themselves to the weight room as much. And you know, we talked about that in the off season. You know, the commitment to the weight room is also what helps prevent injuries and things along those lines. In your sixth season, is that right? Yep. In your sixth year, where is six years gone? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Tell me about it. I, you know, my uh, my goal was to get two five and then yeah. kind of you know recess where I'm at. But mm-hmm. now we're on six, and kind of my goal now is to get to ten and mm-hmm. see see kind of you know where we're at. And um, but now you know we're working towards that that ten year mark. But you know six seasons have definitely flown by. Um, you know when you're in the thick of the season, you know the season sometimes you're you know, flies by and sometimes the season seems like it's dragging along. Right. Um, especially last year when we had some injuries and things along those lines. But um, but you know, it's definitely it's been it's flown by, but you know, I've loved being here at Madison, love working here at Madison. Um, definitely been a very positive and rewarding experience for me and um, just to be able to coach at the school where I got the opportunity to play for and um, just continuing to try to make these you know kids better and continuing to groom them for hopefully going on to the next level but um, or you know just getting them to college and letting them know that you know you don't have to go for athletics but I'd like to see you at least right. give it a shot um, so it's been it's been fun it's been exciting um, and definitely definitely not done yet success a lot of times is measured in wins and losses it shouldn't be but it is um, Talk about success a little bit for you through through the first five seasons. And again, taking wins and losses out of it, you got to see a program grow, and you got to see it grow from the junior high level on up. Have you have you seen what you wanted? Yeah, I mean, for the most part, um, you know, last year was one of our bigger teams, um, and you know, I think you know, each year we gradually saw the numbers kind of grow. So, you know, that was that was rewarding. But you know, we um, we're getting to a point now where we've we've have some place things in place, you know, offensively and defensively that you know when kids come up from the junior high to, you know, play at the high school and stuff, you know, they're they're understanding some of that same terminology and, you know, for the first time this year I feel like um, you know, the youth coaches have really have I've started to buy in with last not this past week, the week before, we had some of the, you know, I think six of the youth coaches came by practice. And I invited them to come by practice, but they came by practice and watched some drills. And that's the thing is, you know, you can sit and talk to them all the time and right. tell them about it but until they actually come out and see it firsthand. Um, and that's that's great. I had one of them text me um, the other day, Dustin Bentz, and say, you know, what were the names of these positions? Because, mm-hmm. you, know, you know, teaching those things. So, you know, we've, we've focused on the middle school the last couple of years um, for building for the future and, you know, now we're focusing kind of on the youth level. You know, the first couple of years I tried to do everything, sure. and you know, was not successful <laughs> of, at accomplishing everything. Right. So, you know, I, I, you know, we focused on the middle school for the last couple of years, and now you know, working our way back down to the middle school, which is kind of in reverse, or mm-hmm. the youth league, which is in reverse order. Right. You know, get the things at the high school, then the middle school, then sure. youth league. So then that way, hopefully, it's building back up youth league, middle school, mm-hmm. and high school. So. Morning. Before we get into something else, let's go ahead and get on the schedule. A little bit different look this year. 
Yeah, definitely a little bit different. Um, you know, next year will be kind of the year that the conference kind of, you know, flips all the way around. But, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of schools, I think there's four of us that have went ahead and took, taken that step in preparation this year. Um, you know, Paoli will be our season opener, which is, you know, different than last year. Um, so we'll play Paoli, South Dearborn. And then week six this year we'll play Mitchell, uh, which is a completely different opponent. Um, and, you know, that's in preparation for next year when the conference kind of flips and we kind of go to a big school, small school. Right. You know, next year we'll play two non-conferences and then you know ideally we'd play the three other small or work what are considered the other small schools that are much larger still than us, but uh, Bedford, Seymour, and Jennings, mm -hmm. you know, the order of it, I don't know exactly yet. Right. And then we would go Mitchell week six, and then we play three out of the other four, uh, quote-unquote, big mm -hmm. schools. Yeah. You, you like that alignment? Uh, I mean, it's it's a change. Yeah. I think changes are good. Sure. Um, so I've always looked at the changes and, you know, anxious to see how it kind of works out for us. Anxious to see how this season kind of works out for us, too. Um, you know, just a little bit different. A little bit different feel, and you know, breaking up kind of the uh, the conference schedule there in right. mid, about mid mid season. So, well, the, the 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 original schedule, as I like to call it, when I first got into broadcasting years ago, had been the same for the last I don't know how many years, and. It is different, and change is good. Yeah, change is good. So, yeah. you know, the, the Paoli and Mitchell, both are smaller schools, 2A schools, but both are quality football programs. Right. That's what, you know, I have to, you know, I'll reiterate it all week when we, you know, this week that, you know, they can't look at them just, oh, it's a it's a 2A program or right. a 4A program, you know. Right. No, they're they're a great program. Um, actually, you know, they're going to run the same offense that we do. And, um, you know, I went down and met with their coaches a year or so ago before we even knew we were going to play, right. play them. And, you know, they welcomed me in and you know shared a lot of stuff you know helped us helped us get to the point where we are today so but they're a very quality program that played in a sectional championship last year and um, I think had nine wins so yeah. very solid 2A football program. Uh, number wise it's always like a roller coaster you, you're up some years you're down some years a little bit off of last year's numbers. Yeah we're, we're a little bit down total numbers wise um, you know and I some of the guys I think you know, just on the fence about playing this year. And, you know, I, I was happy to see that a lot of them have found at least another sport. I'm sure. glad that they just didn't give up playing in general. Right. Um, and, you know, I tell guys all the time that, you know, football is one of the hardest sports to play because you know, it demands a lot of your time, especially in the summer. So it's definitely not a recreational sport where you can just kind of show up and things like that. Mm. So, you know, football is not for, not for everybody. Sure. So, and I, I understand that, but, you know, I, and I try to try to let the kids know, but, you know, Please come have a conversation with me. Sure. Let's make sure that you know you're making the right decision. But you know, my biggest fear is always when a kid doesn't play that he's not doing nothing. So right. you know, you know, obviously I want everybody to play football, but if they're not playing <laughs> football, I want them to be involved in something because you know we gotta we gotta take care of Madison athletics and mm -hmm. make it a, you know all of Math Madison athletics the best that we can. What uh, what's your class wise? How's it broken down? You know, we have about 16 seniors, which we have a you know yeah. solid group of seniors. Um, you know, 14 juniors. Um, and then we're up to about 18, almost 20 sophomores. And then this incoming freshman class is pretty low in athletic numbers kind of all around, and we're at 11 right now freshmen. So. Yeah, and I think we talked last year about the size of last year's incoming freshman class was pretty healthy. Yeah, yeah it was. They were close to, their, to 30 last year, and there's mm. still 18, 20 of those guys around. And, yeah. Um, definitely, you know, they're going to they're gonna have to step up this year and play a little bit of varsity of sophomores. And, I, you know, some of those guys have really worked hard in the offseason. So I'm talking about, the, you know, going back to the offseason, right. I mean, you know, we had a 90, almost a 95% attendance rate you know, average mm -hmm. across the board this summer, which is, you know, great. I mean, compared considering all the different things we do, and you know, you know, taking that as an average. And you know, I took some guys out for dinner the other day who kind of went above and beyond that attendance average that came to stuff, went to other right. camps on their own, worked some community service stuff. And I took the most guys because I've been doing this for three years, kind of marketing this. And I took 13 guys that went above and beyond out to out yeah. to dinner the other night. It's kind of a reward thing, but yeah. there was there was probably closer to 25 guys that were at that almost 100 percent mark mm -hmm. on attendance so you know that that's exciting knowing that you know the guys that we do have are very are very committed so and and that's and 
as, as every coach hopes when when things like that happen you hope that snowballs and snowballs very big yeah definitely and I mean these these 11 freshmen that we came in and you know they saw that and then you know the 11 freshmen some of those guys were those guys mm -hmm. I mean they're definitely definitely committed hard workers and I think you know it's kind of you know it's a culture change sure. you know and understanding that you know it does take hard work if you want to be successful your expectations for the upcoming season have you said you've set goals or you set expectations for yourself or your team obviously the number one goal is I want to stay healthy yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> so but you know I you know I think we have some opportunities to be successful on our schedule this year I think that you know it all boils down to you know what players show up on Friday nights as we continue to try to develop those players in this last week before we have the the real deal but um, I you know I'm ex looking forward to an exciting competitive season um, you know I won't tell what I think wins and loss record sure. but I definitely think it'll be more than what we had last year so um, but you know it's it's all about and we talk about this every year it's all about you know what kids want to show up on Friday nights or Saturday mornings you know JV wise too so um, but you know I, I, I like the group of kids we have um, you know even though the numbers are down a little bit sure. you know, I, I like the group that we have and I tell them all the time that probably wouldn't trade them for the world so yeah. um, we just got to continue to develop them and mold them and you know make sure we have them in those right situations and um, you know look for that positive outcome sometimes it's not about quantity it's about quality and and if you make the if you have the right quality it kind of overrides the the quantity aspect of it you're, you're always looking and we talked about going to the junior high and down into the, you know the parks department has a football program as well and and things that happen down there um yeah i know you're involved with everything the trickle down effect with all the football programs that that takes up a lot of time, but for you, you see what happens when they get to the high school level. Yeah, it definitely does take a lot of time. <laughs> so we have a, changed up our – I met with the seniors last night after we got back from the scrimmage, and I actually let them choose what we are going to do today. So, um, And they're right across the street from us out on the field. Um, we're going to do an offensive walkthrough and defensive walkthrough, and that's based off of what the seniors wanted to do. So, you know, every once in a while it kind of makes you – you know, whatever my thought process was, and, you know, I, yeah. didn't, I let them – kind of say hey what do you guys want to do and let them kind of choose and when it's the same kind of thing it means mm -hmm. that you know we're all we're all kind of working on the same page but you know definitely definitely a lot of work but definitely a rewarding rewarding job they'll open up with paoli next friday night at home over at cub field get out and support seven o'clock is the kickoff time of course 96 7 fm will be there all season long for madison cub football coach we appreciate coming in hey thank you very much all right coach patrick morrison from Madison Football, and again, uh, they'll open up next Friday night hosting Paoli. We'll switch gears and talk uh, girls cross country with Coach Josh Wilbur when we come back at McDonald's here on Works 96.7. Welcome back to McDonald's Live on Madison Tailtop. We're going to shift gears now and go from football to cross country with Coach Josh Wilbur. Young man, good morning. Good morning, Timmy T. It's best that you you leave, you leave off with the best sport. <laughs> with, with football, and <laughs> you had to bring in the best for last, right? That's right. <laughs> oh, shoot. Uh, uh, talk, about, uh, talk about cross country. You guys just got done with practice? We did. We just got, got already? done with Already? <laughs> already, yeah. Oh. They, they won't say that. <laughs> um, they just got done with the five-mile run this morning. So... Goodness it was an gracious. easy five, Timothy. There's no such thing. <laughs> There's no such thing as an easy five. They, keep, they tell me that same thing. Yeah, I can, I can only imagine. <laughs> uh, talk a little bit about that. Let's go back and reflect on, on last season's cross country for, for Madison. What, what, what did you see? What did you want to see? And what did you work on in the offseason? Yeah, you know, all the uh, ladies here, uh, barring the two incoming freshmen, are returning from last season. We lost Alyssa Goins, our lone senior from last year. So the good thing is we didn't lose a lot, and we gained all our runners back and, and a couple more so um, you know we finished fourth in our conference meet which was a great uh, accolade for us and, and a yeah. good step forward for us uh, last year and team went on to regionals as a, as a qualifying team uh, we had one of our athletes uh, Brett K Hall who qualified for state or semi-state uh, um, competition and so you know last, last couple of years we've had an individual in the semi-state you know representing right. our team so you know we, we're moving in the right direction so so this this team is uh, growing. They're getting stronger and faster. Um, their dedication is uh, bar none, it, 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 awesome, really. Uh, so 
we, we, you know, we, we talked uh, many times. We're talking the spring with track and talking the fall about cross country. And, you know, it's, it's, it's so much more than just running. I mean, there's so much more to it than that. Yeah, most people don't know. I, I, most people know this, and this alone is, that's really hard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so most people that don't want to do it just say, man, that's just really hard. I don't think I could do it. And everything's hard if you want to be good at it. Right. It doesn't matter what it is. So that's, you know, usually my response back to them. You know, uh, you know running, it just takes a, it takes a lot of mental toughness, but it builds mental toughness, right. which I think is good for any athlete in any sport. Uh, so so, you know, when we talk about track and field, I always think that's such a great sport for all athletics. Mm -hmm. If you're not in something else, that would be a good one right. to really help uh, build that mental toughness and stamina or, you know, whatever else. Uh, with cross country, obviously it's more it's more the distance, mm -hmm. but it's also learning to be quicker with mm -hmm. that distance. So it's not just learning how to finish, you know, 3.1 miles. Sure. It's learning how to do that at a, in a quicker pace, mm -hmm. in a quicker rhythm. Um, it's understanding what... It takes as an individual to help your team so you know a lot of people say well this is an individual sport and it is but it's just as much a, a team sport so you're out there able to help your team move on uh, which you know that's the greatest satisfaction most people don't want to go running by themselves right uh, at, at another level you uh, I, I talked to coach Morrison just a minute ago about uh, you know uh, bigger faster stronger uh, most people have the 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 perception of cross country. You just the way you get better is you just go out and run. Yeah. No, no, you know, they do some weight room. A lot of, a lot of times we do uh, use our body weight mm -hmm. more often than we use weights. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do a lot of activities. We do core exercises almost every practice if we can get them in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that's leg lifts, you know, uh, building the abs, right. building the arms. you got to have strong – you have to have a strong frame. Uh, what people don't understand is when you don't have a strong frame and you don't have you know, your muscles developed or toned, you basically have what's called poor form. Mm -hmm. Poor form leads to injuries right and that is you know really tough you know because you see it's not just you have to run but you also have to strengthen mm -hmm. um, and so these ladies have a good knowledge of that they've learned how to you know mix the the two together uh, they understand why we do it don't that always want to do it uh, <laughs> right. but but it helps them uh, down the road. So as we get into these races, you got to keep your body straight up. You got to be able to, you know, get your knees picked up and mm -hmm. kick back and and uh, pull through. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not always easy. You get tired, and then that's when you yeah. get poor form. And of course, that's when the stamina and the strength come into play. Talk about uh, the importance of the diet. <laughs> Well, if you talk to Chloe Ferris on the team, she'll tell you Taco Bell is uh, the most important food that you can eat. Uh, <laughs> so and she, I, she may not be wrong. To me too. Yeah, I, I don't know. We're, we may have to try that one out. Oh, wow. But, um, you know, I tell you what, here's the problem with diet is that every athlete is is different so you can sit there and say well gosh you should get this and you should get this and you should get this and there are a lot of nutritionists out there and it, it seems like every nutritionist you talk to has a different plan right yeah <laughs> sure sure and the, you know a different a different way or method about you performing at a high level so, you know, I think it's really one of those things you really have to try to find out what works for you, um, whether it is the, it's more protein or it's more carbs, um, you know, and, and then you got to mix then, you know, how the vegetables and, of course, sure. the sugars and so mm -hmm. forth that you get in with it. And every athlete's going to react differently to it. Um, to be honest, uh, you know, I, I, I joked about Chloe, but, you know, last year we tried to put her on um, a, a kind of a more strict nutrition type plan, and she, she got very tired. Yeah. And, and it, it actually wore her out. Her body did not react really well to it. So she went back to her Taco Bell. She <laughs> livened up and she went out and, you know, what got the worked. 17th at the conference. <laughs> and, you know, so I, I thought, well, I'll just let her do the Taco right. Bell thing. But, um, you know, she's uh, – you know, she, that, that's that's kind of the point. Everybody's a lot different. So right. we talk about it. We they, I'll tell you what, they do a great job. They avoid the pops. They mm -hmm. avoid some of the really unhealthy things right. that they shouldn't. They drink a lot of water. Um, they do – the main thing for runners, believe it or not, is just eat. Mm -hmm. They, <laughs> they yep. tend not to eat a lot. Right. And that is my – that's my biggest issue. you got to you got to have to consume calories uh, because right. you're burning a ton. Right. So uh, that's my biggest worry mm -hmm. for them is to eat more often. 
you know, we have a standard in America to eat three meals a day. Really, for these athletes, they should be eating five meals. Really? Uh, you know, with yeah. having the two snacks in between. Mm -hmm. So they, they yeah. just, they have got to consume the calories. And it's hard for them. Right. Uh, believe it, those like, gosh, I just cannot eat. Like well, that. and you can't, can't you, you can't spend every minute of every day with them. They, they have to be self-disciplined to do the right thing it, it, that's true that's <laughs> true and it's very tough <laughs> and it's very tough <laughs> talking uh, girls cross country in madison with josh wilbur we'll come back to mcdonald's and talk more in just a minute on works 96.7 Welcome back to McDonald's Live on Madison's Hilltop. I'm Tim Torrance talking cross-country girls at Madison with Josh Wilbur. And, Coach, let's talk uh, numbers. I think you kind of mentioned it earlier. Number-wise, you're pretty good shape. You know, uh, if you can get five, you're, you can, you're in good you shape. You can at least compete as a team. <laughs> That's we, right. We have eight girls. Yeah. Um, you know, I always would love to have more, but I, always, I will say this, and I say this every year, I'll, I'll take one rather than 20 as long as they that one – works really hard because sure. if that 20 doesn't work hard it won't matter right um you know and i'll tell you this this year the eight that we have uh put in about 200 miles over the summer uh so they were dedicated they knew what they wanted from last year we we kind of get tired of getting beat by jennings county yeah. i'll be honest you know we we see jennings county an awful lot for whatever reason uh in invitationals uh but at, but at sectionals it's just one of those things where it's just you, the, the team just like uh, looked at me and said we, we got to do something we right. need to we need to get better so that we can compete with them and take them down and right. so they really dedicated themselves over the summer to put a lot of miles in and and the first part of the cross country season here has been a little rough too because mm -hmm. now we're doing things that we would have done more mid season sure. and we've put, been able to push it forward so uh, it's been a little different for them that way but the results are amazing right yeah. now so we look good we we look like we've been doing it for a while mm -hmm. so you know we want to be competitive but that, now it's a matter of staying healthy right uh, what's your what's your class breakdown well we have two freshmen isabel wilbur and kayla detillo mm -hmm. so they come in and then uh, of course high school cross country is a little different right. than uh, middle school cross sure. country uh so but they've uh, been integrating well we have three sophomores chloe ferris brett k hall and kelsey bills uh, who do a great job for our team on the top uh, mm -hmm. top five of our of our team? We got two juniors and Abby Kelly and Claire Wilbur, and we have our lone senior, but a good leader yeah. in uh, Lexi Nay, who's <laughs> just anxious to talk later. Oh, I can only imagine. Yeah. I can only imagine. Have you had any meets yet this year? We have not. We have our first meet this following Saturday. Okay, uh, it'll be our first annual Madison Invitational, mm -hmm. so uh, uh, we're kind of excited about it. Um, from what the AD tells me, we have eight teams for the boys and seven teams oh, wow. for the girls that are that are locked up for yeah. it so should be a fun event uh, it's out at Hanover College right um, and uh, unfortunately for all of us though we're gonna be running the Hanover College four times this year and, oh, wow. and and I say unfortunate because it's just a tough course yeah it's a hard course it's a great course mm -hmm. and we we are happy Hanover has allowed us to use it sure but uh, I'm gonna tell you that's the <laughs> it can wear on you pretty quick right uh, you got Two young ladies sitting at the table going to talk. You want to talk a little bit about them? Sure. The first that's going to talk is Brett Cahill. Mm -hmm. And as I said before, freshman season uh, comes in and, uh, you know, was doing a, a good job throughout the middle of the season. The end of the season just took off. Mm -hmm. uh, did a great job. Um, we had an unfortunate uh, event with Chloe Ferris uh, after conference. Actually, during the conference, me had uh, broken her ankle. Mm -hmm. uh, and we didn't realize it. And, and oh. basically, she she. Fell, fell back and we had to take her out and Brett stepped up, uh, took the lead and was able to go to semi state as a qualifier. So wow. really happy about that. And um, following her, we have Lexi Ney, as I says, our senior. She's uh, in her third season as a cross country runner. Her freshman year, she didn't run, but after track season, um, the money that I gave her to, to start running <laughs> uh, has paid off. So uh, she is now. <laughs> So she uh, has had a few years under her belt. All so. right. Brett, good morning to you. Good morning. Um, why do you run? Because I like food. You like food. <laughs> Running equals food. Yes. Is that how that works? All right. Um, talk about the challenges of being a cross-country runner. It's a lot of effort mm -hmm. and hard work. Coach, it's well worth it. Does, does Coach kind of get on you pretty good about running all the time? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not all the time, but uh -huh. a lot. How often do you run? Even in the off season, how often do you run? 
five or six days a week probably. That's that's a lot to me. <laughs> um, you have expectations expectations for the season? Yeah, I want to make it to semi state again uh -huh. and improve my time. Yeah, what 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 kind of time are you looking to improve on? Hopefully in the twenties mm -hmm. and maybe nineteen. Really? Is that achievable for you? you think, I think so. You think so? Yeah. What's it gonna take? What kinda what kind of determination? A lot of work mm -hmm. in running speed, mm -hmm. less long distance. And then you get to eat. Yeah. And that's good. <laughs> and that's good. All right. Thanks for being here this morning. Lexi, good morning. Good morning. Uh, you didn't run as a freshman? No, I did not. But you're running as a, a sophomore, junior, and senior. Yep, uh, sadly. Yeah, sadly. <laughs> what's, what's the challenges of running for you? What, what's the biggest challenge for you when it comes to running? Um, I don't know. Probably, like, when you first start out for your run, it's kind of, like, takes you a minute to get in there. But after a little bit, you just kind of go with the flow, mm -hmm. and it's good. Do you have a, a favorite um, course that you run? Uh, probably Dennings County's course in Muscatatuck Park. And that would be your favorite. Why? Because it's pretty flat. That's right. That's, really see, that was the answer I was looking for. <laughs> uh, you're going to run Hanover College four times. What kind of challenges? Coach was talking about uh, how much of a challenge it is. It's pretty bad. It's really hot, and there's not a lot of shade, and mm. there's lots of rolling hills mm -hmm. all over the place. Yeah. Do you have expectations for the season? Um, I hope for our team to win sectionals this year and get past regionals. And if not as a team, make it to semi-state, but put a few individuals at semi-state. Do you um, do you have a a, um, a goal for yourself? Uh, my goal for myself would probably be not to get hurt this year and mm -hmm. then to make it down into the 23s or 22s yeah. if I keep working. Is that is that possible? Yeah. If I keep working, if you keep don't working. get hurt. Yeah. Do you have uh, plans after high school yet? Right now, I'm not even, I'm not sure at all. <laughs> well, still you st looking. You still have time. Yep. All right. Thanks for being here this morning. Thank you. All right. Coach, um, got a good group of girls. I do. They, they, yeah. It looks like they kind of stick together, too. They do. They're a good team. Yeah. You know, it's you know when you're when you're just eight, you know, it's unlike some of the bigger sure. sports. You know, it's it's more intimate. Um, you get to know each other really well. Right. Um, the arguments are bigger uh, oh. too, as well. But you know, <laughs> oh, yeah. I can only imagine. No, but I'll tell you what. I really this group right here. Um, it's been a while since I've seen a group work as hard as this group works. Um, and it's not easy. And and you know, you get the negativeness with it. I was like that when I was a runner. I right. didn't want to go run four hundreds or sure. thousands or right. you know things like that. But but they do understand what it means, and, and in the end, they they, they, they get it, mm -hmm. um, and they know what the ultimate goal is for us. And we really do want to bring the the, the awards, the championships back to Madison mm -hmm. Cross Country, to Madison itself. Right. Uh, we think this program is is a very good program. Um, we've really tried to get some help down at the middle school le level, and. Um, Kenzie Mahoney has taken on that, and she's getting the numbers up. She's uh, she had about 30 to 40 kids last year at the mm -hmm. junior high level, so it, you know it, it's gonna it's gonna help. It's gonna right. start helping, and so I, I I really believe these girls are really pioneers at this point. You know, repioneering what we have tried to do in the past and, right. and trying to blaze a, a good future for us. You and you something you mentioned earlier, and, and uh, I want to hit on it again about seeing a vision on how do we beat Jennings County, but they've got a vision on what they want to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, when you have a goal as a team like that, um, it kind of makes that bond a little greater. It does. They all know that they count on each other mm -hmm. to, to make it make it happen because you can't have just the leader. I mean, you could have a, a kid run in 17 minutes. Well, that's great, but if you got no one else, right. you still can't go there as a team. And, and they, they, they really do like that. I, you know, uh, when Claire went her freshman year as a semi-state, she's like, man, I really wish the team was running with me. Yeah. Brett last year, you know, it, it was awesome. She's like, I really wish the team was sure. running with me. It's it's difficult to step on the line, mm -hmm. and you don't have your team there as you right. had all season long. And that's what they desire. They want to be there. They want to hoist the, the trophies. They want to be looking around as as the, the ones with the target on their back rather than going after the target. And that's what I love about it. And, and they truly have that desire. And we have the talent. It's just a matter of harnessing what we can do and doing it at the right time, which is always tough. Do you have a, a goal for your team? You know, I we, we, we've had the goal to win sectionals. Sure. Um, and, and to me, there's a couple of things.
things. You know, it, we got to we got a place in the top half of the conference uh, to be to be good, and that's the Floyd Central and the Seymours. The Columbus East is good. And, you know, Jennings County is de definitely really good. So so we have some really good schools there that we're going to have to take down. Sure. Uh, but we have the ability to try to go do that. You know, in in sectionals, it's going to be us and Jennings. Right. And 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 you know, believe it or not, you know, we got uh, a couple others there that that are going to give us some some trouble. But we, I think, we're going to be. It's going to be us, the, those two teams. And then you know, really at regionals, you got the juggernaut of Columbus North. Right. Um, but it's just getting that top five there, sure. placing ourselves, you know, at a, in a good position, uh, like we did last year. We were third coming out of sectionals. Mm -hmm. uh, we really felt like we would have been, you know, would have been there right. uh, if we'd had a healthy Chloe. Right. Um, but it, we just, we just it, it, sometimes that really takes the the air out of yourselves, sure. and, and and that that hurt us. But you know, I think we can go to semi state as mm -hmm. a team, um, and I think. We we can have a couple girls achieve some goals, and I know they think they're lofty, but I, I think Brett can can hit the 19s. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, Claire can can hit the high 20s. Mm -hmm. I think Kelsey Bills can hit the high 20s. She's mm -hmm. been running ju just uh, super, um, and we get that, and, and hopefully get Chloe after her. She's had surgery, so sure. get her back mm -hmm. to way, the way she was running last year, which low 21s but could right. be high 20s. Um, and Lexi is, I, I tell you what, if I was to give out most improved right now, Lexi. Mm -hmm would get it I mean mm -hmm. she she has uh, spent a summer getting stronger uh, working on her stride working on her her speed and she truly can I I, I, I mean I would have never said this a long time ago but I think that kid could actually hit the 22s the high right. time, you know no doubt about it and if we do that mm -hmm. we're gonna be dangerous right. I mean we really would be dangerous it'll be a fun fun season to, mm -hmm. to talk about uh, it sounds like it's gonna be a fun season it's like gonna be an exciting season and, and I'm kind of anxious to see as you are, how this team progresses because I think it, the determination is there. It's just putting it all into action. Well, you know, and our two wild cards are our, our two freshmen, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I didn't speak to them because, they, you know, you don't know what they're going to do right. yet. You know, you don't know how they're going to act, but, you know, they're working hard in practices. It, you know, it takes a while to get it and understand it, especially as we put the speed into it. Right. Um, and, and it was a little difficult for them, but this this last week, we, we call it speed week, and, le and, and they <laughs> had a tough time, but they, they did it. They persevered. Right. They've made it through it and, and I think they're starting to starting to catch on and and uh, you know who knows yeah. what those two will bring to the table once the season gets going as well so you know I am excited it will be fun you know it's gonna be a it's gonna be a good season to to watch them grow and and uh, get stronger get faster sure. achieve achieve the goals that they want um, we all know it's not gonna happen every meet right uh, but you know you hope to see one every meet you know somebody right. hit that hit that goal and right. then the team just continue to move and and i think this it can kind of be almost this pack so yeah. i'm kind of hoping that whole right. red sea comes yeah. back yeah <laughs> sound like an exciting season coach yes. we appreciate you being on this morning all right thanks a lot timmy t all right again uh, josh wilbur madison girls cross country thanks to him for being in thanks to the ladies for coming in this morning as well that will do it for this edition of coach's corner from mcdonald's from my engineer aj bramer i'm tim torrance on works 96 7.